So uh, let's talk a little first about um, uh, classification of polynomials. I'm just sticking it in here. It's not. A, I don't think there's a great way to. Well, I didn't think of a great way to pl to place this. So uh, freaking out. So tell me what a binomial is, or give me an example of a binomial. And in your head, you should, if you're just at home, but if we're in class, I'd ask that question. And so a binomial is a polynomial with two, see, by, prefix by, with two terms. So three plus x, or seven x squared minus two. Those are binomials. What about a trinomial? So look at the free prefix, right? And we have the prefix tri. So how many terms do you think it's going to have? Yes, it's going to have tray. So x squared minus 3x plus 2 um, is a trinomial. And what about a monomial? Oops. Cannot spell. I mean, it was going to uh, <laughs> the Sesame Street song. Oh, well. Old people know what I'm talking about. Oh, I said old people. Oops. Uh, monomial. Uh, x, 3x, 2x squared. Those are all monomials. All right? So now on to the main portion of this, uh, this guy here, this video here, um, is the distributive property. Let's go, uh, let's go here uh, in case we're novices. If you're novices, if you're not novices, just scrub, but maybe this will give you uh, uh, additional understanding. I don't know. Hey, what's three times eight? Of course, it's 24, right? What is another way to write the number eight? How about um, two plus six? So that's, there's multiple other ways to go, but I'm just saying there's two plus six, right? So let's look at three times eight, uh, but instead of three times eight in the form of uh, the eight itself, let's use this form of the number eight and multiply that times three. And we're gonna get, of course, uh, we should get the same answer, but let's take a look at this. This is saying that I have three of these guys so that's three times two, and three of these guys, plus three times six. And of course, of course, that's six plus 18, which of course is 24. And uh, you can use apples and oranges and whatnot. Um, if we used variables, let's say that's apples, and this is oranges, and I have six of, six of this group. I put however many apples, X of them, 52, 12, five, I don't care, it doesn't matter and 17 oranges, but we're gonna represent it as Y. So no matter how many apples, no, how many oranges are in a basket, if I have six of those baskets with identical quantities of apples and oranges, uh, individually or separately, then I would have six times that number of apples plus six times that number of oranges in aggregate, all of the baskets put together. So you're, con you're probably used to seeing this type of arrowhead notation to help us think about the distributive property, property but that's a mechanical thing, and so the understanding is really just that multiple of. Um, and so we're gonna just run through some examples here, uh, and hopefully this video will be relatively short. Here's one to start out with. Uh, and someone will say, we're gonna start out with that? Yes, we're gonna start out with this. Okay, uh, 3x times 2x squared is 6x cubed. And I'm just drawing the arrow to keep track. And that's going to be negative 9x squared. And then this guy times that guy. And that's going to be plus 15x. And then I'm going to take the second term and multiply it times everything in the other uh, polynomial. So negative 4 times 2x. I'm going to write those in green. And it's not going to fit on the same line. but um, So that's going to be negative 8x squared plus 12x. That's this guy. And then this last guy is negative 4 times 5, which is minus 20. All right. So now we can combine like terms. So there is an x squared term and an x squared term. And they just happen to line up. That doesn't always work out that way. And it was just not planned. You'll note that many things are, for me, are not planned. Um, and so we get 6x cubed. And so these two terms added together are minus 17 of those guys. I got negative nine of them and another negative eight of them, so I have negative 17 of them all together. And the same idea here, I got 15 of these and another 12 of those, so I have 27 of those, minus 20. Yes, and I have lots of these, those, and these guys. So that's, these two polynomials multiplied will give us this expression, and that's simplified, okay? 
So let's take a look at another one. It's on the other side. No, nope, it's on the other page. Yeah, we're almost done. Uh, uh, many of you are used to the idea of FOIL. Uh, that would be like x plus 2 times x minus 3, and hopefully we know how to do that. Um, I personally would lose would lose the idea of FOIL. I would lose FOIL, get rid of it. Um, if it helps you, that's fine. I'm not saying it's bad or, you know, but the problem with it is it only works when you have a binomial, two terms, times a binomial, two terms. FOIL will not work. Uh, where is it? Oh, wait a minute. I went too far. FOIL will not work on this. It will not. This trinomial times that binom binomial, it will not work. First times outer, first times outer, oh, excuse me, yeah. First times outer, oh, first, these two, outer, those two, inner, these two, last, those two, and you forget this term altogether. So FOIL doesn't work, only or only works in the case of a binomial times a binomial. So it's very, very limited. So just get the idea that every term in one polynomial has to be multiplied times every term in the second polynomial. Uh, and then we just have to talk about some special cases. I don't know why I keep going back to orange. Uh, special cases, x minus a times x plus a. Hopefully you know that that's the difference of two squares, or some people say the difference of squares. And you should recognize that here's a square, here's a perfect square, and it's the difference of the two. So the difference of two squares results in this. Uh, the, what's happening is this minus sign and this positive sign uh, results in the middle term equaling zero. Another special clay case is a perfect square trinomial. So this becomes x squared plus 2bx plus b squared. This middle term is the it's twice the product of these two, or these two. It's twice the product of these two terms. Um, it's because these two binomials are the same. Uh, the, some textbooks provide this as a separate example. So you get x squared minus 2cx plus c squared. But really, it's the same deal. It's just that these negative signs result in a minus sign here. Uh, and you don't have to memorize them, but they will make life easier if you can recognize them, especially when we go from this side to that side, in other words, factor. So if you recognize them when refactoring, it would be highly beneficial. It'll speed up your work, create efficiency, right? 